Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India So we have uh, discussed about three body problem in the last lecture. We will continue with that. So three body problem. This involves three particles. Basically, Newton's law. It's applicable for particles. Okay. And it so happens that once we take the aggregation of particles, which we call a body. So, in this, in that case also it becomes applicable. So, you have to always be very careful while um, writing the equations. Now, let us uh, start with Three body problem involves total eighteen constants, out of which we can identify. Only ten. Rest eight remain elusive. So, out of this eight, eighteen constant, and how we are getting these eighteen constants, we'll discuss about that, and uh, we can identify only ten constants, and other eight cannot be identified. Solving three body problem this can be done using one the numerical method. And the second analytical method, numerical methods, analytical methods, and there can be mixture of these two, of these two. Now, this numerical method. It is not a topic of our discussion. We are not discussing about this uh, numerical method at all in our uh, space flight mechanics. Analytical method here you can get solution, get solution only for some restricted. cases then mixture of these two this also we are not going to discuss this we are not discussing so as we have written this involves 18 constant out of which we can identify only 10 rest it we can remain elusive that means we cannot get a closed form solution for three body problem okay. now the issue is to get the analytical solutions, but before that uh, we have to pass through a number of stages understanding various things and thereafter we will come to the analytical stage.
given. So, general analysis is uh, nothing but uh, we want to get a uh, closed form solution, but obviously it is not possible. So, I am just writing a definition here at this point. Instant of time given at any instant of time the positions and positions means it is a position vector positions and velocities of n particles of known masses so masses are known its initial position and velocities are known so obviously you can integrate the equation of motion you can get the solution but uh, that too has restriction that after some time it will uh, start diverging okay so there are various issues with numerical solution because your uh, numerical method it's not infinitely precise it has finite precision so error starts building up and especially if the if you look for the unstable system so if your system is unstable so a small error it will cause the system to diverge very fast while here in this case this is not the case you can uh, propagate it for a longer time but ultimately it is it will start showing anomalous behavior calculate their positions and velocities at any other time instant in future under the influence of under the mutual gravitational acceleration so here it's a general statement about n particles so we will do some generalized uh, presentation for this means uh, if you remember that uh, for the two particle system we have got that the total angular momentum h is a constant energy is a constant a constant and also its uh, center of mass it moves with constant velocity so there we got six number of constants so here this is three number of constants this is one number of constants and uh, r we have written as a t plus b so here total six number of constants are involved so total ten number of constants we were able to identify the same way here also we can identify ten number of constants but before that it is a better to write uh, the equation of motion quickly and understand various points about this. So, this is x, y and z reference frame this is the origin, origin we can show this as maybe as O and there are number of particles. So, n number of particles. 
so let us say this is one and uh, somewhere this may be two this is the ith particle and this is the jth particle so here we show the radius this position vector of this as ri and position vector of j as rj let's say along the same line what we have done for two particle system let's say mass is mi and this mass is mj so what we are interested in that uh, we find the equation of motion of j with respect to i or maybe in whatever way you want to say if you, you want to find out the equation of motion for this with respect to this how it the motion will appear mm -hmm. also we can do the same thing in terms of the barish centric frame like uh, say the center of mass as we know uh, as we will derive that center of mass in this case also does moves with constant velocity so either it's a uh, fixed or either it will be moving with constant velocity depending of the and that you can get from the initial uh, if the initial conditions for all the particles are available you can calculate it so this may be this is the barry center barry center in the case of the solar system we call it the barry center or we can call this as the center of mass okay so we will write the equation of motion for this and thereafter we will work out further so dri d square ri by dt square mi is the mass so on the i the force is acting here in this direction as shown by the this green arrow and the notation we are going to use will write rj minus ri equal to rij this is the notation we are going to follow okay. some of the books may refer this as uh, instead of writing rij they may write it as rji so irrespective of the notation you use the uh, physics will not change okay so here in this case what is the force acting on the particle i due to the jth particle so this will be mi times mj multiplied by the universal gravitational constant and then the distance between these two point particles so rij whole q and it acts in the direction rij it is directed along the arrow as it is shown so this way if you see so uh, second particle this will also attract it this particle will this particle will also attract the same way this particle will also attract so as many particles are there all those particles will attract it this is the one one here in this point so this will also attract so this implies that we need to sum it over all the particles so we need to sum it from j equal to 1 to j equal to n if n n is the number of particles but a particle on itself it cannot apply any force and therefore we need to write here i not equal to or j not equal to y j not equal to y because a particle cannot apply force on itself so we have to eliminate that term so this constitutes this is the basic equation of motion 
for the ith particle and this will utilize in our formulation So, our equation of motion can be described in terms of the inertial frame as shown here x, y, z. in terms of barycentric frame so these are the two things you can you need inertial frame basically to uh, write the equation of motion so we can do it in the inertial frame or either in the barycentric frame where inertial frame is x y z as shown here and your barycentric frame is shown here in this place. However, once we are looking for the relative motion, okay. so motion can also be described with respect to the barycentric frame for the individual particles, individual particle and then also for uh, it uh, for the individual particle also you can write with respect to the inertial frame and we will see that there is no difference either uh, if you choose either the barycentric frame or either the inertial frame. But once we are looking for uh, how one particle uh, appears to move with respect to the another particle, so that gets reduced to basically the relative motion. So, anyway whatever we do if we are trying to look for the relative motion as we have done earlier also. So, in that case you cannot violate the Newton's second law. So, first we have to write the equation of motion in the inertial frame itself and here we have two inertial frames one is the x y g another one is the barycentric frame these two options are available to us okay. and thereafter you write the equation and then whatever the way you want to describe uh, in terms of uh, the motion can be purely in terms of barycenter with respect to barycenter how it is moving or it may be with respect to some particle how the other particles are moving uh, that can be the issue. Okay, so, if, uh, this we write as our equation number 1. Okay, if we sum over all the particles the previous equation we have written over and if we sum over all the particles. So, we get in that case we get something and uh, shortly we are going to work it out what does that mean. So, that will uh, get reduced to of course, the case where uh, already I have stated the center of mass of the system moves with constant velocity okay. one more thing i would like to point out here as we see here in this place r consists of xi cap plus yj cap plus zj cap zk cap where i cap, j cap and z cap they are the unit vectors. Okay, so, you can see that if you uh, break it up in terms of this is the vector equation of second order, uh, second order differential equation differential vector equation of let me write here this is second order. differential vector equation. 
differential equation this is vector this is a vector or simply we can write vector second order differential equation instead of writing here so this implies that we can break into three parts we can write it like this mi times d a square x i by d t a square on the right hand side this we can break and we can write here similarly m i times d a square y i by d t a square we can break and write it something on the right hand side whatever comes from this place and the same way d a square z i by d t a square this equal to so th this is a second order scalar differential equation this is also a second order scalar differential equation this is also a second order scalar differential equation so how many constants will be involved with each of them so two with them two with this two with this and two with this so total six constants so for this you will get six constants involved so one particle six constants are involved so this implies for one particle six constants are involved hence for three particle or n particles how many will be there so this implies for n particles six n constants will be involved because for each particle you can write six uh, for each particle you can write this uh, this sort of differential equation and each of them it's a giving you six constant and therefore six n total constants are involved in the system okay. so before we write the equation in a generalized form like we have been writing here in this place so we will return back to this equation again we need this equation but before that let us look into uh, so what i intend to tell here that uh, we will look into the general properties of equation of motion so general properties already we have uh, i have stated h is constant and e is a constant and then your center of mass moves with constant velocity okay so for that we got the constant say and b but right now we try to our intention is to describe the motion of a particular particle with respect to the another particular one so first we will write for three different particles and then we will generalize see the one particle this is another particle here and uh, this may be another particle here in this place so let us say this is m1 and here this is m2 and this is our m3 we will write here this is your m3 and m2 is here in this place so problem here is write the right equation of motion of the third particle there is respect to the first particle this is our objective 
and thereafter will generalize to n number of particles. So, what we are looking for that the motion of the third particle about the first particle. this vector we will write as this is r 2, this is r 3, r 1. Therefore, this becomes r 3 1, this becomes r r 1, this is 1 to 3. So, here we need to correct r 1 to 3 r 1 3 means r 3 minus r 1. So, following the same sequence we get here r 3 2 and then this becomes r 1 2 equation of motion of the third particle we need to work out. So, r 1 3 double dot this will be d a square or d t a square r 3 minus r 1 d t a square minus this implies that we need to get here the equation of motion for the third particle and the first particle separately and then if we subtract it. So, we can get this quantity. See here in this form, if I write it like this, okay. this has nothing to do with the Newton's equation. Okay. The, the, this is just a, an expression written here r 1 3 equal to r 3 minus r 1 and if I differentiate twice. Okay. So, we get this equation here in this place and nothing to do with Newton's equation. Now, we write the Newton's equation. So, we have m 1 r 1 double dot this is the equation of motion for the first particle. So, uh, this is being acted by the other particles whole cube r 1 3 whole cube r 1 3 because we are writing in the vector notation. So, we tend to write it in this way. And remember here the sign is plus not minus because this force is acting along this direction not in the opposite direction. So, here this is plus sign and what else the other force is acting. So, the another force is which is acting is I am showing it by the blue line here it is acting along this direction by m 2. So, that will add as plus g m 1 m 2 r 1 2 whole cube r 1 2 this is our equation number 2. The same way we have m 3 r 3 double dot this can be written as g. So, forces acting on this will be due to 1. In which direction this is acting? This is acting opposite to the r 1 3 direction. So, now here in this case it is acting here as I am showing by this red line. Okay. So, therefore, here this will appear with a minus sign and then on this uh, 
this particle, the second particle, uh, the third particle, the force acting due to the second one. So this also we have to read, write. So G M three or first we write M two M three divided by R two three whole cube and vector from R two to three and we have to see whether the plus sign will exist before this or minus sign. So, we are writing in terms of R 2 3. Also, we can write in terms of R 3 2, it is not a problem, both are okay. So, on the third particle, the forces are acting because of the first. So, here because of this the negative sign appeared and on the third particle again the force is acting along the by the uh, force acting due to the second particle it is along the R 3 2 direction or 2 3 whatever you want to show you can show. If you write R 2 3, so this will come with a positive sign. If you write here R 3 2, this will be coming with a negative sign. So, both are ok. okay. So, just a matter of later on you can convert. So, this is our third equation. Okay, now, if we subtract what we are looking for for this particular form it, it should come in the form of r13 and for that we need to subtract from r3 the r1 so here what we are going to do we are going to subtract subtract equation 2 from equation 3 and if we do that, so we can write here and before that we need to do something more. We need to divide both side by m 1 here in this case and m 3 here in this case and if we do that, so this will cancel out because it is a non-zero quantity. So, we can eliminate it, we can uh, go to uh, next page and write in one more step rather than compressing here. So, we have d a square r 1 by d t a square once we divide this particular equation r 1 double dot g times m 3 divided by R13 whole cube R13 this particular part and thereafter this part we take g times m2 g times m2 divided by R2 whole cube and R12 R12 whole cube between 1 and 2, this is between 1 and 2. So, uh, we will have R 1 2 this is between 1 and 3 okay. and similarly we will have d a square R 3 by d t a square this equal to g we divide both side by 3. So, m 1 minus m 1 minus g times m 1 divided by g times m 1 divided by r 1 3 whole cube. And, uh, 
with minus sign here and then plus g m 2 divided by r 2 3 plus g m 2 divided by r 2 3 whole cube and r 2 3. These are actually very small things and uh, we can write it quickly just for explanation it is uh, I am taking time. So, subtracting subtracting four from five. So, the this is the equation written in inertial frame. This is also the equation written in inertial frame, and we have just removed the mass by dividing both sides. And no way this is defying Newton's law, and therefore it is a 100 percent correct. Okay. Only thing now we need to do that we have to subtract 4 from 5 and once we subtract we get this equation Therefore, the left hand side this becomes R. Okay, so here uh, if you look here in this place R 3 minus R 1 we have written as R 1 3. So, therefore, this is R 1 3 by d t s square. So, this quantity is nothing but the position vector of 3 with respect to 1. So, how the position vector of mass 3 with respect to 1 it is a changing. This is what it is implying and if we take the first derivative this is the velocity with respect to the 1 and if we take the second derivative. So, it shows the acceleration okay. and in no way it is incorrect. And now these two terms can be combined together. G we can take it outside R13 whole cube M1 plus M3. And if you can recognize this term is what it appears like, suppose the second body was not there. So, in that case, this particular part it is a your. Uh, referring to the two body problem, how the mass 3 is moving with respect to mass 1. But if the other mass is also present which in here in this case is the mass 3 then the situation changes and then we can write here g m 2 can be taken outside and r 2 3 divided by r 2 3 whole q minus r 1 2 divided by r 1 2 whole q. And with this equation uh, the extra term which is appearing here this extra term this is the perturbative term. So, you have two particle system here and the third particle it is acting like it is a distorting the motion of the these two particles with respect to each other.
Okay, so we are uh, going to wind this part. Wind up this part now. We will name this equation as equation number six. This is also called the direct effect. This is three direct effect the first term this is the first term on rhs on the right hand side and the second term which we have written as gm2 r Let us check this R two three okay. So here for just I am verifying this particular part. R two three we have written here. R two three is a vector from this side to this side. This is R two three, and R three two is shown here. It is from three to two. So the force acting on the third particle due to the second one, and this force will be acting along the along this direction from three to two. So this is R three two. R three two. M three. M two. The notation we are using here, one three, R three two is uh, okay. This notation we are picking up. We, about the notation, we have to be little careful that we do not do any mistake. So, so therefore, this quantity is according to this notation, R two minus R three. so uh, we need to do the correction here so as we were following this notation this r32 will be the vector directed from 3 to 2 that means we have to subtract from 2 this 3 and therefore we should write here as r32 rather than writing r2 r23 this is r32 So if we follow this notation, so about the notation, be be careful because we can do this error. R three two, and here also in the denominator also we will have R three two. Okay, now it's okay. So um, here also we need to change in these places R three two. therefore the second term which we have here gm2 r32 divided by r32 whole cube minus r12 divided by r12 whole cube this is the second term and this is perturbative from
and what does this mean? This is director effective understand. This is just acting like a two body system, okay. which is very, very much visible. This term here, the per which I have written as the perturbative term, there are two terms involved in this. So, we break it up G M 2 R 3 2 If you look here in this particular term, this is the effect of the second body on the third body. So, this is the direct perturbation, direct perturbation term, this is the direct perturbation term. And here, this term, this is indirect perturbation term. Indirect perturbation term. Suppose, I cited by taking one an example. Let us say this mass m is earth, m 1 is earth and uh, there is a satellite moving around this, which I will show by some other color. around this another satellite is moving, this is m 3 and sun is located somewhere here, this is your sun and this is satellite. So, motion of m 3 this satellite about 1. So, this term is taken care here in this place, this particular thing, this, uh, this is your just two body problem, but the extra body is present here which is sun. So, because of this sun, you get one force here in this direction okay. and that term, this appears here as this, this is the direct perturbation sum. So, it is a perturbing the motion of the particle m 3. And this term, which I have written as the indirect perturbation term, this acts by acting the effect of sun is manifested on the earth. Okay. This will affect, the sun will affect earth and in turn, the earth will affect M 3, which is the satellite. And therefore, this is not a direct term, this is indirect term as I have written here, but overall these two terms together it is a called the perturbative term. And you can see here that because of the presence of sun, the motion of the satellite around the earth, if this is the earth and about this the satellite is moving and about this sun an earth mass system which we call here in this case the very center or the center of mass of the sun earth system. So, they are moving about their mutual center of mass and which lies inside the sun itself, because sun is very heavy around uh, 13 lakh kilometer sun diameter is uh, and it is a very massive as compared to the earth. Therefore, what we can observe that earth is moving around this, but because of the presence of the sun, the motion of the satellite will get affected. And you can also consider this from the point of the view of uh, this is the sun here and earth moving around this, this is the earth and then the moon is there about this. So, how the motion of moon will appear? Now, both the systems here the moon is also accelerating toward the sun and earth is also accelerating toward the sun, but primarily the moon is, if we look from the earth, 
So, moon is circulating, uh, it is uh, going around in an orbit about the earth, this is your earth and here this is moon, moon's orbit and therefore, moon's orbit as the it goes around in the ellipse in the el elliptic plane. So, moon's orbit will appear like this. So, it is a going around the sun also and simultaneously it is a moving around the earth and because of that it appears like this. So, moon's orbit it also gets perturbed because of the sun. Similarly, if you have a satellite here and if suppose this is moon and this is earth. So, moon will also affect the satellite motion and then the other planets also they will affect including sun. So, the all these things it is a uh, affecting the motion of this satellite. Therefore, it is a very important to uh, if you are looking for a long term propagation of this satellite that uh, say if, uh, after 3 months where my satellite will be in space what its orbit will be we need to account for all these perturbations. And one of the objective of our discussion will be also this parameter uh, variation method which is part of general perturbation. So, we will get the differential equation of motion for the say if, uh, any satellite <coughs> which is perturbed by other planets. And it is a matter of uh, derivation and that derivation is pretty uh, difficult also and uh, pretty lengthy also. And uh, whatever we are uh, developing here, it is uh, going to help us in understanding the parameter variation method. So, thank you very much and we will continue in the next lecture.